So uh, sometime it happens that uh, a group, a company acquires seventy-five percent or more share of a of another company, and that becomes a group for loss relief group purpose. That is called a that is called a group loss relief group. So in order to create a loss relief group, at least seventy-five percent holding is mandatory, which is direct holding. And if there is indirect holding, it will be effectively seventy-five percent or more of that. And in that group. overseas company can be part of that group but you cannot surrender or receive losses from the overseas company now take an example uh, in this example the xplc acquires 80% shares of a limited now clearly you can see that xplc in a limited it's a group of 75% holding so it's a loss relief group between x and a and now a acquires 90% shares of b limited so we have to see the effective rate if effective rate is more than 75% then it's also a part of the loss relief group now xplc acquires 100% shares of yinc and yinc is a resident in canada so whether it's a resident in canada or in uk it will be part of the group and yinc has acquired 80% shares of c limited so the effective rate is also the more than 75% and c limited in turn acquire d limited 65% so in this case if you can see that c limited and d limited it is uh, uh, we have to check the effective interest rate and from the c limited and z limited we have to see the uh, effective interest rate the requirement is that identify 75% loss relief group now if we can calculate uh, from x and y you can see that uh, as far as x and uh, a is concerned it's a part of the group as far as a and b is concerned so it's 90 into 80% that is 72% so b is not part of the group likewise y and c is part of the group y and c has acquired 95% shares of this so 95 multiplied by 8% 80% this is more than that so it's a part of the group similarly and uh, as far as the uh, 65 into 80% this is more than the 50 this is more than the uh, this is not uh, the uh, requirement that uh, d limited is not in the part of the group so the clearly there is a group between xplc between aplc y e i n c and c limited and uh, then z limited and d limited is not part of the group now there is a separate group between a and b because it's a 75% direct interest so we have two group structure one is x a y i n c c and z and other is a and b now what is the objective of this 75% loss relief group is that a company within the group can transfer its losses to another company and the company who is transferring the losses is called the surrendering company and the company who is receiving the losses is called the claimant company now how much losses can be surrendered by the surrendering company it depends on what kind of losses you can share so you can share current year trading losses as much as possible the ntrl deficit that is the deficit of known relationship rule and the excess of the qcd so first of all you have to offset qcd in the current year the excess of management expenses of, of an investment company the excess of property losses and non trading ifa losses so these are the excess and the current year you can surrender to the company but for excess first of all you have to offset in the current year and then the excess can be transferred to the claimant company surrendering company can surrender any amount listed above and surrendering company can surrender to one or more group of companies so this is very flexible you can send three companies your losses who can afford your losses as much as possible now as far as the claimant company is concerned the claimant company offset surrendered company losses against the ttp that is the total profit after deducting all its qcd uh, it cannot carry group relief forward back so from the current year you can only offset and maximum group relief is restricted to 
current year losses and brought forward losses offset first. So the uh, claimant company has to offset its current year losses and brought forward losses first. And after that, whatever is the amount available, you can offset with that amount. Now it's not necessary that you can also uh, offset directly current year losses and brought forward losses, but tax authority always assume that you have uh, claimed your losses first and then wait for the other company's losses to be offset. The claim is to be made by the claimant company and within two years of the end of the accounting period in which loss occurs and it requires a notice of consent from the surrendering company as well. Now you can see from this example, ABC. So ABC acquires 80% uh, shares of uh, XYZ few years ago. 80% shares. So it means that uh, uh, ABC has uh, direct involvement uh, and that is 75% shares ABC hold. Now, both prepared accounts to 31st March accounting year are same. The results of ABC, the company that has acquired is trading losses, 130,000 interest income, property losses, QCD and capital losses of 12,000. Now you cannot transfer capital losses under the 75% rule. So you should avoid this capital losses here. Now unrelieved brought forward trading losses, 50,000 maximum amount to be surrendered. So you have to find out how much amount to be surrendered. So you can see that uh, first of all, the current year trading losses separate, then find out the excess of property loss, losses brought forward, QCD and interest income. And this is the uh, total. So this total has offset with the interest income. So interest income is 2300 and you just adjust this 2300 from the excess from the losses and get the excess amount. And this excess plus the current year trading loss becomes the maximum amount that ultimately a surrendering company can transfer to the claimant company. Now, as far as the uh, accounting period is concerned, sometimes it happens that the period of account do not match with each other. So if surrendering company's accounting period is different from the claimant company, then this is called corresponding period and you have to match with the surrendering company's accounting period in this way. Uh, you have to check that it falls wholly or partly within the surrendering company's uh, accounting period. If accounting period are different than time apportion, maximum loss to be surrendered is equal to lower of loss of surrendering company in the corresponding period and TTP of claimant company in the corresponding period. So we have to identify the corresponding period and the loss and profit of each other so that we can easily offset. Now you can see that uh, in this example, ABC and YZ are member of 75% uh, group. ABC accounting year end is 31st December and having trading losses of 150,000 while uh, the AP accounting year end is 30th June 2019 and having trading profit of 160,000 in QCD of 20,000. So calculate how much loss can be surrendered by ABC. You can see that the surrendering companies uh, accounting period starts from 1st January 19 to 31st December 19 and then check with the claimant company and match the time period. So claimant company accounting year at 1st July 18 to 30th June 19. So you can see that the surrendering company's period of how much period is falls in the claimant company. So you can see that uh, uh, from 1st January 19 to 30th June 19. From 1st January 19 to 30th June 19. This is the period that is overlapping between them. So this is the period you can count it six months. So you can take surrendering companies six month losses. Trading losses is 1,50,000 but take 1,50,000 into 6 by 12. So this is 75,000 of loss that can be surrendered and claimant company 160 minus 120, 1,40,000 of uh, TTP 
six by twelve, that is seventy thousand. So surrendering company can transfer uh, seventy five thousand, but only transfer the lower off figure, and that is lower off is seventy thousand can be transferred to the claimant company. Now the surrendering company has the option of offsetting. the uh, losses against the carry back method current year relief or carry forward but also another group loss relief through which they can offset the losses against the 75% group of companies now as far as tax planning opportunity is concerned it's very important to understand that whether the loss should be surrendered or not so what is that you have to plan that it, whether it is beneficial to offset loss from your own reserves or whether it's beneficial to offset with your uh, counterpart that is the subsidiary companies and then the order of surrender that which loss is to be offset which loss not to be offset any amount can be surrendered up to the maximum so it's very flexible that is no requirement that partial offsetting is not allowed so you can easily uh, check that uh, how much profit on which you have to pay tax what is qcd what is the position of the group what is the tax rate and so on and so on now as far as the companies joining the group so corresponding period starts when company join the group and loss arises before join the group cannot be available within the new group for 5 years when loss making company joins the group there is a change in ownership and there may be a restriction on loss relief so we have uh, discussed this change in ownership uh, and uh, according to that we have to focus on that uh, uh, what would be the situation now as far as losses of overseas companies are concerned the group loss is normally allowed between uk resident group companies but uh, uh, there are some exceptions of overseas companies transfer of losses but that exception is not being examined in the uh, in your exam 